This, in my opinion, is the best budget power rack out there, but Titan's T2 rack does have a few issues. So we're gonna compare it to other budget racks like this one, which is actually the cheapest full rack you can buy, and a few others we've used and reviewed so you can find out if this is the right rack for you. Titan Fitness makes more attachments for their entry-level rack than anyone else out there. And it's also compatible with several other manufacturers, making this the most versatile choice out there. But not only that, they're also using a heavier gauge steel than everyone else. So it's also the sturdiest option. But let's tell it like it is. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I've been pretty hard on Titan over the years, and deservedly so for some of the things they've released, but I've also consistently recommended some of their best stuff because I do think it's important to be thorough and honest as a reviewer rather than try to pad my own wallet. But I've had a lot of reviewers and influencers tell me companies won't work with us if we're critical, but here we are. Titan sent me this rack for the review and I'm still gonna be me, so you know I'll have a little fun with this one. And don't worry, Titan knows what they're getting themselves into. So if you find this review helpful and enjoy our content, then please subscribe and use the links in the description to support the channel. Let's start with the packaging and assembly, which is one of the areas I have a few complaints. It comes in a large box, well, technically two for me since I also have this six post extension and I'd say the packaging is okay for the rack. Everything is individually wrapped but there's not necessarily much cushioning between components so you may get some nicks and scratches here and there but at this price point this type of packaging is fairly normal if not a little bit better than some. The accessories though are shipped separately and are generally much better produced and I found that to be true of Titan's other rack lines as well. Building this thing though, that's where things get a little interesting. Not in the actual assembly, if I'm smart enough to figure it out, you'll be more than okay, but they don't include physical instructions. H how much could a few pieces of paper actually cost and some elderly men like myself like to have instructions we can ignore and throw away to feel like we accomplished something and let me tell you I have atrocious vision and that's not a joke so I was constantly staring at my phone trying to zoom in on the digital directions to figure out which bolt goes where because there's a set that's five millimeters shorter than the other which is probably where I'd normally make a joke about how important length is, but I'm actually a little bit OCD, so I legitimately cared. But like I said, you're not me. You'll be fine because putting it together is very straightforward and simple, unless you're one of those people in the reviews complaining about the tools they gave you. That's these things right here. And I'm not kidding when I say there are people on Titan site complaining about how hard it was to put the rag together with these. Please don't try that. You need your own tools. All right, as we go through this rack and talk about its specs and Titan's attachments, as well as other manufacturers that make things that are compatible with the T2, I also wanna make some comparisons to other budget racks because a lot of companies are just doing subtle variations of the same thing here. So if you look at reps PR 1100 or 1000, it doesn't really matter. They're both pretty similar or options from CAP or others. It won't take you long to realize that since these are all imported, the best budget rack is the one that does what everyone else is doing just a little bit better. And that's where Titan has an advantage because not only are they using a thicker steel than pretty much every other budget rack, they're using a 12 gauge, whereas Rep and others commonly use 14 gauge or this pile of from Balance From that uses 16 gauge, but advertises 11, which actually really makes you wonder about their advertised 800 pound capacity versus the 850 pounds of the T2. But Titan also has a leg up in that they're using two by two steel, which not everyone is doing. For example, Hulk Fit in the Bell's residential rack are using 2.35 inch or 60 millimeter square tubing. But don't worry if your eyes are glossing over as I spit out all these numbers, all it really means is that Titan's rack is compatible with a lot of other manufacturers, at least to some extent. And since they make more attachments for their economy rack line than anyone else, you'll have more ways to build it versus other options. That being said, there are a 
few things you'll have to understand before you mix and match between companies, but we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Since this is a fairly compact rack and the footprint is always the same no matter how you order it, I should warn you, it can get a little tight back there for your spotter, especially if they're pulling a wagon like mine is, since you don't really want them standing on the rear cross member when spotting, which means you better be real comfortable with them because you're going to be up in their business a little bit with the depth of the back of the rack being so shallow, but that's not really a complaint because as I mentioned before, all compact budget racks are built similar to this and many designs are much, much worse. So if you do decide this is the rack for you, you've got a few things you'll have to figure out when ordering. You've got all the finish options you could ever want as long as it's this nice black powder coat, but you do have to pick between the 71 inch and 83 inch height options, which is what this one is. 71 inches might work for some of you that really need to cram it into a tight space, but at six foot tall, at least that's what my dating profile would say, if I had one, that rack is actually shorter than me and they're not cutting holes along the top and the bottom 14 inches of the uprights, which could be a factor for things like overhead press. And regardless of rack height, it leaves your plates almost seven inches off the ground if you're using the safety pins for something like rack pulls. Speaking of wanting a few more holes to play with, it's typical of entry level racks like this not to have holes drilled along the top and bottom cross members and you're obviously not getting equal four way hole spacing like you would a three by three rack since they're trying to keep the price down which means you do lose a little versatility for things like band work or if you're like me and you spend logically and have a sensible amount of gym equipment you won't be able to throw your extra j cups up top or use your darko anchor to hold things that are clearly not extra and definitely essential. Are you missing other features in this budget range that a high-end rack would have? Of course, you're not gonna find height markings along the uprights, but that's not really a big deal. And if you're as good as me at lining up the pins across the rack, it's not gonna be an issue. But if it is, you can use a paint pen like we used to have or get some magnets or stickers like the ones plate snack sells to mark your heights. You'll also find that some accessories lack UHMW where they make contact with the rack, like the straps or even the inside of the standard J cups, but you can add UHMW tape to these like I've done to my Rogue Monster Light cups. And as I'm constantly reminded, having fancy equipment doesn't actually help me look like I lift and those things aren't gonna actually help you lift more weight. So they're not necessities, even if they are nice to have. And actually, if you look at Titan's standard cups versus what you typically get with a budget rack, these are actually very well done. Sure, they sit a little loose on the rack, but Titan isn't exactly known for their tight tolerances or their packaging or their customer service. But jokes aside, I could go on and on about the negative comments and DMs I get about literally every company. Rogue, Sornex, Rep, you name it. That's not to excuse Titan and the reputation they've built over the years, but if you've been watching them, you can see they're taking steps to improve and sending me this rack is a good example of that because I'm often brutal in my reviews. Go ahead and watch my video on this one. But where Titan stands out versus other entry-level racks is in their versatility. And what I mean by that is not only do they make more accessories for their two by two racks than anyone else, but since they're using one inch holes, which is the most common size for two by two racks, you can fit attachments on this from Rep Fitness, Synergy, Fringe Sport, and others. Though there are some caveats to that. Since Titan is using two inch hole spacing and many others use three inch. So make sure to do your research first because if you need multiple holes to line up for the rack's attachments or the depth of the rack matters, this one's just under 26 inches, then those factors may make it so certain attachments won't work. And also this is 
probably not some statement I thought I'd be making about Titan a few years ago when we started this channel, but their stuff is better made than a lot of the options in this budget range. So that doesn't mean they're all perfect, which makes this a good time to talk about some of these accessories. We've got the six post extension, which doesn't actually increase the rack's footprint because it just installs over the weight horns in the back that you typically use to store weights or weigh the rack down if you felt it needed some more stability. But since they're using 12 gauge steel, this is already a heavier and sturdier rack than a lot of the crap you'd find in that $500 price range. The extension adds these two rear uprights and the uh, four weight horns and obviously some other cross members, but since it's a compact rack and you're really only adding on maybe 10 and a half inches off what would already be the original rear upright, your plates can get in the way if you're using bumpers. Traditional plates like I've got here, they'll work fine, but the larger diameter of bumpers can interfere with racking and unracking weights, which makes the fact that Titan uses pictures of their rack with bumpers a little bit funny but I've seen people remedy it by putting some plates up front or up higher or even swapping a few weight horns to be on the inside. And all things considered, it's a solid attachment. The straps though, I don't have any workarounds for and that pisses me off because I prefer straps since they're quieter and softer on your bar. And I hate pin pipe safeties with a passion. I'm not saying it's a logical hate, but they're clunky and slow and I'm spoiled and whiny. Sure, they work well and they'll save my life and keep me safe, but if mine look heavily used, that's actually for me leaving them on the ground and then stepping on them and rolling around like a friggin' cartoon character, which <laughs> sounds funny, but it's actually not a joke that's happened several times. So what's wrong with the strap safeties? They're just way too loose. So they're worthless for bench because you can't actually set them high enough because then the J cups get in the way. But what really aggravates me about them is they're pretty well made. I mean, look at this trash from Bounce From. They're not safe and they're horrible to adjust. Titan is using thick steel and a quality nylon and they're quick and easy to set up. So Titan, please, I know you're watching this. Please fix these. After our last budget rack review, I gotta say there's something to be said about equipment that just works. And while the T2 has its flaws, there's a lot to like about this rack. Would I like it if the tolerances were a little tighter? Sure, but that's fairly common for Titan's attachments on this line. But I'm telling you, having put a few of these starter racks side by side, you could do a lot lot worse. And the T2 has a pretty good build quality, so you're probably not going to do better at this price. But I reviewed this rack based on a single comment, so let me know in the comments if there's another I should check out. Now, that's not to say this is going to compete with high-end 3x3 racks, which have more attachments, features, and almost limitless ways to build them out. But I feel safe when using this, which is more than I can say for that one. And I know it's popular for people in reviews to say, this is all most people will ever need. But honestly, that's pretty accurate here. This would work for a lot of people. Thanks to our Patreons, links in the description. And if you're not sure which rack to buy, check out our Power Rack Buyer's Guide right here.